Hey there, rednecks, preppies, redneck preppies. It's me, the redneck preppy. How you doing today? Great, good. Not quite three months ago, I reviewed the Garmin Zero C1 Pro, the latest chronograph to hit the market, and one that I think it is fair to say has made quite a splash since its release in fall 2023. Understandable why, as virtually every review has praised it. It combines simple operation, a small little form factor, and effectiveness that has, as seemingly dozens of reviews stated, changed the game for chronographs. Now, we've yet to see how companies like Labradar will respond, but I think it's safe to say that they better do so soon, or it might become uncomfortable for them. Now, given that I have three more months under my belt to zero, I figured it might be useful to follow up and give you my thoughts on it with the benefit of added time. Has anything changed? Do I love it more? Or has the shine worn off? I'll also answer a question that I've been asked a few times. So in the past three months, I have used the Zero in a variety of weather conditions from rather cold to surprisingly warm, uh, at least for Northern Canada in winter, in sun, snow, and rain, and with different caliber rifles ranging from rimfire to my 30 cal gals. It's been on shooting bench for quiet days to those where almost every available station was occupied. I've also used it while shooting at distances ranging from 50 to 200 yards. Not that that would make any difference. Not an absolute hammering of the zero, but I think I have some more perspectives to share. Let's get into the positives. Now, it's sad to say that this would even be a thing, but as Garmin hasn't screwed anything up with the software updates that the unit has received so far. The Zero's operation remains simple and straightforward. I have it up and running in seconds for whatever I'm shooting. It's easy to customize to the extent that the Zero software allows you. And I am going to be addressing that, by the way. It continues to work well with the Garmin application on my phone and editing and retrieving the data is not an issue at all. Battery life has been living up to Garmin's claim of up to six hours of use. Now, I've never actually shot for six consecutive hours to test that. It is winter up here right now. But extrapolating longevity based on multiple sessions between charges, I think six hours is probably about right. Uh, when I initially reviewed the Zero, I tested it against an optical chronograph and the Garmin was pretty much in line with the numbers that the shooting crony reported. I've also found that when comparing it against modeling software like Gordon's reloading tool, that the predicted velocity numbers are pretty close to reality. Now that speaks well either of Gordon's reloading tool, the Zero, or both. Either way, I haven't had any issues with the numbers reported, no weird anomalies or anything. I've had no issues of the unit picking up the shots of people shooting next to me, so I can't even comment on that. In any case, it's not difficult to erase the shots on the off chance that it does in fact actually happen. Now, I've only had two instances in over four months of a shot not being picked up. Coincidentally, both shots were rimfire. Maybe that played a role. In any case, failing to pick up less than a tiny fraction of 1% of shots is something I can definitely live with. Reliability seems fine so far. I haven't uh, punted this thing like Jan Stenerud, but I have dropped it a few times, and so far it survived my clumsiness. Now, in my initial review, I blasted Garmin for stating that the battery wasn't user replaceable. That is still their position, but you may have seen the pinned comment that I made on my initial review. I've learned that the Zero does use a battery that Garmin has in several other of their products. You can even buy those OEM batteries online for not a lot of money. So I'm happy to report that it doesn't seem too onerous to replace the battery if you ever need to. I've placed a link in the description to the Sniper's Hide forum post that discusses the battery. Now on to the annoyances, such as they are. I do wish that you could put more data fields on the screen while shooting. Outside of the primary field, which of course displays the velocity of your last shot, you are limited to three customizable ones. 
Your choices for those three are any combination of minimum, maximum, and average velocity, standard deviation, extreme spread, kinetic energy, power factor, and deviation from average. Now, I realize that most people probably don't want a cluttered screen, but why not give the option to make the last shot velocity field smaller so that I could include more data fields below. I think that's something that could be remedied in a future update to the software if enough people ask for it. I do wish it had come with a case. Now I've been throwing it into this one that I had lying around. It's fine for what it is, but it's not particularly protective. Now I realize this is a niggling point, but for US $600 or Canadian $800, are you telling me that Garmin couldn't have thrown in a case? What's weird is Garmin doesn't even sell cases for the Zero, so it's not like they, they were trying to upsell you an accessory later. That said, if you need a case made specifically for the Zero, I've seen at least one being offered online. There's also a link in the description to an Amazon listing for a generic case where one of the comments specifically states that the zero fits. And it's also much cheaper than the custom one. You're welcome. Now, this one is probably gonna matter more for precision shooters, but unlike some chronographs, the zero can't provide you with measurements at different distances for the same shot. Some precision shooters like to have data for bullet velocity at like 25, 50, 75, and 100 yards for a shot. And while there are some chronos that do that, the Garmin does it. Now, it's not a deal to me, but I thought I would mention it if you're expecting that sort of data from a chrono that you would buy. I think the one area where the lab radar actually outhandles the Zero is the fact that its phone application allows you to actually control the unit. Well, at least when you aren't regularly losing a connection, if lab radar owner's complaints are true. The Garmin application really only serves as a place to store, edit, and transmit your shooting logs. That's it. I'm a little surprised that you can't do everything on the Shot View application that you can by actually physically interacting with the Zero. It's not a big deal, but it's kind of puzzling nonetheless. That's basically it. I don't have any real complaints with the Zero. I well and truly love it. I'm fond of answering this question in follow-up videos. Would I buy this today, knowing how it has worked over the past few months? Yes, without question. The sticker price is still a thing, but if you can move past that and can usefully integrate a chronograph into your shooting activities, absolutely. I still recommend this as strongly as I did in my initial review. In fact, probably more strongly. The Zero C1 Pro really is, oh God, I apologize for using this phrase, really is a game changer. It takes all of the strengths of its competitors and adds no weaknesses. There's no strapping it to your rifle. There's no fiddling around trying to aim it properly. No problems with connecting it to the application on your phone. You'd have to work to accidentally shoot it. It doesn't blow over. It literally fits into your hand and then into your pocket. It's almost impossible not to recommend. Okay, now that question I mentioned earlier that people have had for me. Now, given that there are a lot of lab radars and magneto speeds on the secondary market as people are dumping them in favor of the zero, is it worth picking up one of those given that they're sometimes half the original price? The other chronographs didn't stop accurately reporting bullet velocity the day the Zero came out. They're still very capable chronographs. Now, while they have their downsides compared to the Zero, at least in my opinion, they're fine. Do your research carefully and find out whether a lab radar, a magneto speed, or any chronograph meets your needs. And if the price is right, sure, pull the trigger. So simply, if you don't want to spend the money that a Garmin commands, but can live with the cost and functionality that another chronograph has, I can understand reaping the financial benefit as others go into upgrade mode. 
But man, the Zero C1, he is a sweet piece of gear. At any rate, I hope you found today's video to at least be vaguely entertaining and mildly informative. As always, I hope your days at the range are always fun. Take care, and bye-bye.